I recently had the opportunity to interview Sean White, aka Intentional Carnivore. It was a great discussion, and in fact, it was such a great discussion that it was a really long video, and I decided to break it up into three separate videos. So without further ado, let's go to one of those videos. This is something that I think we all kind of fall into this trap a lot. Like in this interview today, we've been talking about all the great things, and we're basically telling everybody how great this is. But what we're not explaining is it's not like, it's not like, what was it, Best Buy that had those commercials with the easy button? You don't just hit an easy button, oh, right? Yeah. There yeah. are there are different struggles that you go through, especially early on. You're going to have, like, mm -hmm. sugar cravings and stuff like that. But even now, like, I, I'm a year in, and there's different obstacles that I run into. So can we kind of change gears here a little bit and talk about maybe some of the obstacles that you've run into over the last year so that people realize that, yeah, we are human, we are real. And this is something that while it's a great thing that we're doing for our health, we're human and we run into obstacles all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I mean, there's, there's definitely obstacles and, um, you know, um, getting started was the biggest one. Uh, I feel like, you know, uh, the, maybe not even the biggest one. Maybe it was just the first one. Um, so many people always want to stand out. And I was the same way. Uh, so many people want to start uh, July 1st or August 1st or, you know, another day. Like on April the 17th, 2022, I decided I'm doing it today, right now, like not tomorrow. Like I'm not sitting down at the table for another meal without it just being a plate full of meat. Like it, that's just n now tomorrow will never get here. And if it does, you're going to, you know, that's a whole nother problem that we can cover then. But, um, to, you cannot go into this with the tomorrow I'm going to fix myself. That's not going to give you like, you need your why's you need to get your reasons for what you're doing. And if you're serious about it, today's your day. Today is the day that you start anything that you do. You can't start something tomorrow. You, that That's not ever going to get here. You're never going to plan. And you obviously can't change what happened in the past. I've gotten email after email of people who have tried carnivore or keto or ketovore, and they fell off and they're, they're trying it again. And one of the things that I try to tell them is, you know, forget about what you didn't or did or didn't do before today. Today is your day. Change today and move forward from here because, you know, we all fail. And a lot of times we, we are our own worst enemies and we use our failures to push us to the next failure. And, you know, failures, I've said it in the video, failures are stepping stones that we use to get to success. Don't let the failure stop you. You might fall off track. You might fall off the wagon. You might have something that's not on the plan. You might make, uh, you know, a, a poor, horrible decision and feel like a failure. But you overcome that and use that as a stepping stone. But you got to get started. If you don't get started, you're never going to get anywhere with it. So that's the, one of the biggest obstacles. Um, the other op the other uh, biggest negative thing, I guess that you, you know, that I had to face and everybody else has to face is your plans in life change. If you want your life to change, it has to look different than what it looked like before. And oftentimes I feel out like we, we say, well, you know, I want to see how close I can get to healing and reversing the issues that I have, but stay close enough to the eating style that gives me what my brain triggers and desires on. Like, I want to keep some of this, but I want the healing from this. And it doesn't work like that. You don't get to keep the brownies and the ice cream and get rid of the diabetes. It's just, that's just not how it works, you know? So, and that's why I, it was, you know, with BBB and E, I felt like that was far enough inside the ketogenic spectrum. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't what I desired to do, especially at first. Now it is. Um, 
But I figured that's far enough into the ketogenic spectrum that if I can get to that point and stay there, if it doesn't work on that, then I, I'm not doing any other stuff. Because I'll be honest with you, if I'd have heard Dr. Ken Berry talk about um, counting calories and all that kind of garbage, I would have never even gave this way of eating a, a shot. That have been the first thing I heard and been like, man, I'm not counting no carbs. I am not counting no calories. And it's, you know, it is what it is. It's not even that hard. It's just that I, it's a lot of effort that I, there's no way I was willing to put in at that point. Um, and some people do track um, the, the, the carb uh, counts from, uh, if you're eating carbs, if you're eating keto or keto, you need to track to make sure you're not going over. Um, mm -hmm. but as far as, uh, carnivore, that was one of the biggest thing that was appealing about it to me is not having to do that. So, um, there's, there's, there's a bunch of negatives and that's, I guess that brings up kind of another negative that you, that I, I run into, everybody runs into, there's a lot of voices and a lot of different voices say a lot of different things. Some people say you need more fat and some people say yeah. you need more protein. And some people say you need an equal amount of both. And some people say you got to drink a ton of water. And some say you don't have to drink unless you're thirsty. And some people say you have to have electrolytes, but some people say that you don't use electrolytes. And some people say that you need to walk for 10 miles a day. And some people say you need to, I mean, there's, you're going to find somebody saying something different all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you'll get really caught up in those voices and you'll, you know, you'll talk yourself or let them talk you right out of success. It's super simple, super simple. Get rid of the carbs and the sugar and you're going to help what can be helped in your body. It's, it really is that simple. Now it does take discipline and all those things, but that is, it really is that simple. And all those voices, while the concepts are maybe correct and it may have worked for this person, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So be real careful about the voices and, 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 you know, I'm not saying discount them all, write it down, whatever you want to do, but you can't follow 10, 10 different voices at the same time. You know, because obviously you got to figure out what is literally how much fat you need. There's one way to find out how much fat you need. It's by eating fat. If you eat too much, you're going to have some, you're going to know about it because you're going to be in the bathroom a lot. <laughs> yep. I can assure you, even in a year and two months or however long in, I eat too much fat. I can, you'll know it because I won't be sitting here at the computer. I will be in the bathroom. If you don't eat enough fat, you're going to feel like crap. You're going to be, you know, your energy is going to be in the dumps, whatever. If you don't, uh, and, and so forth and so on. And we could, you know, I digress on the issue, but I mean, be careful. The, the negative, one of the negative things is listening to all the voices, especially after you figure out what does work for you. That's one of the problems, the negatives that I found. Um, even with the success that I had, I listened, you know, and it wasn't even somebody who meant to do it. It wasn't somebody who was meant any harm by it. It was another challenge because challenges are good for you, right? That's what got me started on BBB and E, right? So the challenge was the lion diet. And I'm like, yeah, let's do the lion diet. Now I've had great success. I love where I'm at. Everything's functioning correctly. Everything's going great. I switch over to the lion. Guess what? I start feeling like crap. I'm aggravated. I'm, I, when I realize that I'm aggravated, something's we way past the point, you know, that it should have been called out because I'm usually the last person to figure out, you know, you're overdoing it with the aggravation today. <laughs> um, but um, I switched it up just on a challenge, made it 11 days. And I'm like, that enough's enough. I'm not doing this. I'll get my eggs back. You know, and that's me and that's what works for me. So I had found the success, but, you know, listen to the challenge and getting involved. What worked before may not work now. You, sometimes that changes, but nobody can answer those questions except for you. You have to do that and you have to play with it. And sometimes it changes. And that's the hard part. You know, if something quits working, adjust it. That's a negative. You know, you can't just do the same thing all the time, every time in the same amounts. 
but your body's going to speak to you. And once you let the, that ghrelin and that lept, lectin, let, let, I'm saying it wrong. The hung, the satiety hormones. <laughs> <laughs> once you let the satiety hormones get to functioning properly and they start communicating with your body and telling you when you're really hungry and when you're, you've had enough and you listen to that and you don't and overeat or, you know, try to starve your body. Um, it's going to function a whole lot more, a whole lot better for you. So, and you'll yeah. be able to answer a lot of those questions. Cause it, you know, if they, if anybody had an exact amount, they could sell that for billions, you know, <laughs> how much fat do I need? You need 3.7456 <laughs> ounces every 7.457 seconds, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's literally going to be something different for everybody. And everybody knows that that's why you don't hear that amount. There's general ballpark, uh, you know, uh, equations there's general ballpark equations that you can do to figure out general ballpark fat protein ratios but the best way is just eating and testing it for yourself it takes time yeah that's great advice so one thing that i can think of that i think we both experienced um as an obstacle and I know it's changed for you a little bit because your wife is now doing carnivore and has been for a couple months, I believe. But early on, you were the only one in the family doing carnivore. Matter of fact, I think I remember seeing one of your videos where you were showing your dog um, yeah. and you're saying the only other carnivore in the family, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So talk a little bit about how that worked, especially early on when you're first starting, because other people are cooking other foods and you smell those other foods. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. So my wife has been eating, I think it's uh, six weeks now, six or seven weeks. Um, and she's doing really great with it at this point. But when I first started, I mean, you can imagine, you know, if, in the condition that I started in, I'm sure she probably thought, yeah, right, whatever, you know, you're starting another diet. Woohoo, you know? Um, so, and, and, you know, at the time me and her, neither one had a, were very skeptical about how healthy it was and, and all the things that everybody always come into this way of eating wonder. Um, so it was tough, man. And so she she her my kids still eat standard american diet for the most part um not in that there's a soda a two liter soda that's been over there uh on the side of the like table like sitting in the floor for uh two and a half months now nobody in the house drinks sodas anymore which i'm extremely happy about yeah. um everybody's drinking these these uh what do you call it? The sparkling waters, you know, I got different kinds of trying them out and then whatever. But, um, whenever she was cooking, uh, cooking stuff that was not on my plan, I removed myself from the house. I'd go outside during supper time and sit on the front porch on the swing and, or go for a walk, you know, and it's not cool. You know, you want to eat with your family. I mean, that's your family time, you know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if you're going to change your life, you got to change your life. It can't look like what it looked like before. Um, it's got to look different and, and people are not going to understand you and they're not going to, they're not going to, they're going to think you're weird and you are because you're eating, a, you're eating the proper human diet and they're convinced that all the stuff that the standard American diet is, is, is correct. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's all good. You know, just understand, you know, you're the weird one, whatever you do it, do what you got to do to get the help and make up your mind that, I'm doing this no matter what anybody says. I don't need anybody's permission to get healthy. I don't need anybody to okay this or sign off on it because those same people that think you're weird now didn't have anything to say whenever you were uh, sick and depressed and everything else, you know, but now they got something to say. So don't, don't get, don't let that be a dis distraction either. Uh, another obstacle. Um, so you know, I removed myself from the situation so I didn't have to smell it. Um, and it was tough sometimes. Some of it smelled good. And some of it was stuff that I wanted to eat, you know. But that's that's what I knew I had to do, you know, honestly. 
Yeah. And I knew if I sat there in the house and smelled it for too much longer, I'm about to go over there and have some. So what would I do? I go out there on the porch to sit on the porch and just swing on the swing, you know, <laughs> it worked. Yeah. And that's, that's great advice for people that are just starting now and are in the same situation mm -hmm. where other people in the family are not doing the carnivore diet, you know, great advice right there. Um, okay. When they start cooking their other food, it's time to step away and, you know, that that'll help keep you strong and and stay away from eating that food. Well, I mean, even even just just starting out, I don't usually have cravings anymore. You know, I don't usually have I usually don't struggle too bad. Like I, in my refrigerator right now, before before six weeks ago, my wife was given or bought a, a Reese's cup. Now, I love used to love Reese's cups. and if this had been a year and a half ago, that thing would have been history already. <laughs> it's still sitting in there and none of us have eaten it, you know, which is amazing to me. But even in a year and two months today, I had to, I attended, uh, I attended a funeral and at the funeral, uh, it was at a church that I used to attend and a sweet lady used to make this peanut butter cake. I don't know what kind of crack they put in that stuff. <laughs> Uh, but whatever they put in that stuff, it is amazing. And I guess it's just sugar crap, right? Because sugar is more addictive than heroin, right? Yeah. But nevertheless, um, I used to love that stuff. So whenever we were standing close to the front, you know, the family was going by for dinner. I noticed that peanut butter cake and I just look at it and I'm like, you ain't doing it. So I got me a little bit of the meat that they, they were serving and I went and sat down ate my meat and like, then I'm just sitting there eyeballing that cake. And I know that if I keep eyeballing that cake, I'm going, I'm going to go get a cake. I'm going to go get a piece of that cake. And we do that. We put ourselves in those situations, man, even in a year and two months with everything that I've seen and experienced, don't put yourself in a situation. You're tipped in yourself and you're, it's almost like you're trying to tease your mind. Your mind knows all your secrets. It knows all the things about you and it will play tricks on you. <laughs> Do not put yourself in situations that you know you can't handle and expect to come out successful on the other side. If you got cookies sitting on the counter and that's your thing, get rid of the daggum cookies because it's not worth the, the regret you're going to have because eventually you're going to be in a weak moment and you're going to go have those cookies just sitting on the counter. It's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's just the way it is, you know, you have to set a resolve, but it doesn't matter how strong your resolve is. If you're, you have things in place, that's going to tempt you literally like your strongest temptation sitting right there out in the open, put steps in place. That's going to set you up for success. Um, you know, get the stuff out of the house, ask the people that live in the house with you, listen, if you care about me and you care about my health and you want to see me do better, you know, I don't need a mom or a daddy. I need somebody, uh, you know, a family that's going to come along beside me and support me and kind of push me a little bit. And if they love you, that's exactly what they'll do because they want to see you around longer. Um, so, I mean, there's going to be many obstacles and it's, it's definitely not over even for me because that peanut butter cake bot got me today, but I didn't, <laughs> I ended up leaving me and my wife jumped, you know, I was like, you know, spoke to the family, my, the rest of our family and said, listen, um, you know, definitely praying for them in the situation, but I, I got to remove myself from the situation. So be willing to do whatever it takes when it, when you get that focus, then, uh, I feel like you can accomplish anything whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are over a year doing this mm -hmm. and about, so it was about what, two months or so ago that you started your YouTube channel. Right? Yeah. April, almost, almost a year to the day from the time I started carnival. I started my channel on April the 10th and I didn't know this. I just went back and whatever. Um, April the 10th of 2023, I started my YouTube channel and I started carnivore April the 17th of 2022. Mm, and wow. I, I put a video on the channel, um, back, it was from when I started the walking challenge, uh, July the 2nd of 2022. 
And if you go on my channel, it's just a short, it's not a, you know, a long video, but it's, it's a video of me at however many, you know, I think I lost like 45, 48, 50 pounds, you know, something somewhere around in there. Um, when we started that challenge and it's a video of the first time that I was able to walk for longer than 30 seconds. And I, I was, it was in that challenge and I, you know, pull it up and, uh, that's where a lot of the quotes that I eat, like my shirts and stuff are made. I, you know, it's not that they're that great. It's just that it, it's a big motivator for me. Um, some of the stuff that came out of that video, but yeah, yeah April, April the 10th, uh, of this year, to a little over two months ago is when I started the channel. All right. And so your YouTube channel name is intentional carnivore. And we talked a little bit about your Facebook page as well. Um, what other social media do you have that, uh, you know, our guests can go to, to, uh, keep up with your journey? Oh yeah, man. Uh, so intentional carnivore, the YouTube, YouTube channel, intentional carnivore, Sean White is my Facebook page. The, the group, the private group, if any, anybody's interested, I mean, you can join that as well. If you wanted to, I try to create a space for anybody on the ketogenic diet, whether that's keto to to a carnivore uh, or, be, or lion diet for that matter um, is a carnivorous community. And then Instagram intentional carnivore. I'm getting better at using that. I'm not as tech savvy as a lot of, a lot of you guys. So I'm having to figure out the Instagrams. All I ever got was uh, hack messages from, from people. So, uh, but I am on there a good bit now. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, and a, I'm sorry. And Twitter uh, okay. intent. And it's intent carnivore on Twitter um, because you, I couldn't fit all intentional in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was going to say, so I, I work in more of a technology type of field, but my daughter had to teach me how to even do um, stories in um, Instagram. So yeah, I, I, I don't, don't get know, all that I, stuff. <laughs> I still don't know the stories thing. Like I've never, I've done the live. Uh -huh. I've done the live and I've done like a, like I've shot a video and I've uploaded a video and put it on there, but I haven't done like they got, what, like, what's the difference between a reel and a story? And a, like, I, I've got stuff pinned everywhere. I don't even yeah. know. I've got stuff from my Instagram probably pinned on Twitter. I don't even know. Cause I'm like, it says, do you want to pin this? I'm like, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> pin yeah, it I don't somewhere. Know. I've noticed that reels get more views than stories stories but maybe may, i don't know maybe the stories i think might just go to the people that are particularly following you i'm thinking and and again i could be totally wrong here so somebody's probably going to comment at some point and be like no what are you talking about that's not how it works but, well, but that's what and, it seems like to be i don't know <laughs> well i guess people think i'm being funny but i'm like well am i not supposed to follow the people who follow me how in the world are you following me but then i hit follow you and it says request i'm like yeah. what do you mean request you're following me but i can't follow you <laughs> what kind of sense does that make you know <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I, and maybe I just need to be educated on it because I don't get it. I was like, what do you mean? I have to request like you're following me. That makes us friends, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a different world. See, this is the problem when you get a bunch of old guys like us trying to use <laughs> Instagram and other social media. So my kids yeah, remind me man. all the time that I've been old for like 30 years or whatever, you know, so. <laughs> right. Well, I, and my kids can't show me because ain't no way I let my kids get on Instagram with daggum. You know, the reason that I never got on there is because I am a, I'm devoutly and devotedly faithful for the last 21 years to my wife. And all I used to get on there was messages from, from ladies who wanted to talk or spam bots or whatever they were. And I'm like, man, I don't need that kind of junk, you know, because it's just, uh, I don't care about that. I'm not in the start relationships. I ain't trying to meet nobody. And whether it's a spam bot or some dude named Dennis in Milwaukee or something, I don't know, you know, it's just not what I'm, yeah. If I, you know, can help somebody, I'm more than happy to do that, you know, but chatting about insignificant personal, that's not really where I'm going with it. So that's why I stayed off of there for so long. And that's why hmm. I don't respond to some of the conversations once they go in that direction, because 
that ain't me. I, I, I'm not looking for that. I got one woman and she's more than I can handle and I'm devoted to her. So I don't want it to appear to be something that's not. Yeah. And Twitter will be the same way. I, I don't know mm-hmm. how much you did mention Twitter. So yeah, Twitter's the same way. It's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's just yeah, way too man, many I, messages that come in there and it's like, okay. I don't think so. (laughs) You got to live intentional, man. Everything. And, you know, I I mentioned it earlier and, uh, you know, part of that comes from intentional choices that we make, but the other part of it, like I said, it stems from my faith. You know, I'm I'm a Christian and I believe that, you know, Jesus lived intentional. And I feel like that those of us who are also Christians must look at his example as being intentional about everything that he did. And, you know, it's not my job to judge people and disagree with people. And a lot of people disagree with me on that, even that issue right there. And that's fine, you know, but it's not what you believe. It's what I believe. I believe that I have to follow his example. And the best that I can, I can see from that is that I show you love. Uh, You know, it's easy to love those that love you. It's not as easy to love those that hate you. And so that's what I try to do. I try to, love people that disagree with me, love people that I, that I don't agree with and help those people just the same. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. And I feel like that's living intentional, you know, living with purpose. Yeah. All right, Sean, we've gone on for a long time here, so I'm going to let you go, Yeah, man. but I do want everybody to know that um, I'm going to have links in the description to his different social media, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, the Facebook, group that you're talking about and so forth. So people have plenty of ways to, you know, get in contact with you, at least to hear your message more. Um, you know, again, I think that your message is so strong because of everything that has happened to you in the past year. It's, it's been a complete, you know, a complete turnaround of, of your life. And, and that has got to be inspiring to a lot of people out there. And I know that's why you do what you're doing. And that's why I wanted you on the channel and do this interview and to help get that message out there that, that, you know, that's why I do this channel as well. Um, because, you know, I mean, and you look at my case, I, I don't even have a thousand subscribers, so I'm not getting any money at all out of YouTube. Yeah. And I know when you get to that point, you're still only getting like this much, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not, but, it's not what you would think. I promise. Yeah, you're not you're not at a thousand subscribers yet. You'll get there. <laughs> yeah, you eventually, I guess. Yeah, I will. So, you know, it, that that's it. That That's what it's about. It's about helping other people and letting them see what benefits we're we are all seeing from the carnivore diet. So. So, yeah, I'm going to have um, all those links out there. And um, before we go, is there anything, any like final comments that you would like to make? Um, uh, you know, I've, I've said a lot, but the overarching message you cover pretty well, man, you know, there's a lot of hurting people out there and they can get a lot more hurt from everywhere else. The last thing they need is, is people who like you and I are doing, who are trying to help people down in them, you know, coming out and arguing and whatnot. Um, and that's why I love this community and what, what working together and, and all the things that we're about and, I feel like that's important, you know, showing, showing that message, working together, coming together and, and, you know, focusing on the positive stuff and helping people. And, um, you know, because they need hope. There's a lot of people there in the same place that I was. And, um, if it wasn't for somebody spreading that message of hope, I may not even be here today to have this conversation with you. And if there's somebody out there like that, listen, if you, just give this a try. Give it, give it 90 days, 30 to 90 days. See how it works for you. Um, if you're struggling, um, you, you know, thinking about harming yourself or something like that, reach out to somebody, please. Um, you never know where people are at. You never know what they're living through. Um, reach out. Do not isolate yourself. Um, talk to somebody, even though you don't want to, please reach out to somebody. And that's the main message that I, I, that's been on my heart heavy the last couple of days with everything that's been going on. And the last couple of 
uh, since I come out of it myself, man. I want to reach those people. I want them to know that there's hope and they don't have to keep living that way. And I appreciate you allowing me to come bring that message on and get in and share that with, with your audience, man. It means a lot to me. And, uh, you stay strong too, man. And just keep pushing forward. Cause it, it'll grow. It'll take off and people will resonate with you. And, um, you set the example, brother. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Very powerful message. Thank you. Thank you.